Amen. Praise be to God. Corey, you had a dream, I believe it was last night, about the rain coming, didn't you? You want to share that? Uh, actually, that was um, that was today oh, while right. I was in uh, in, uh, was in praise and worship and in, in prayer, and uh, I saw these uh, rain clouds, and they were coming, and it was it was like a rainstorm, and it was coming, and um, I saw it off in the uh, in the distance, and I asked the Lord, you know, Lord, I, uh, you know, I want to, you know, am I worthy? You know, I want I want to be worthy to be in your reins, and I asked Him to uh, to put me there, and He did. And he put me in his reins, and as the reins were pouring on me, um, fire and just white light was just like just flowing out of me, just like emanating out of me, and uh, it just was it was awesome. And uh, I had a backpack on, and uh, I had a walking stick as I was in the reins, and um, the thought that came to me was I was a, a sojourner, and um, um, and as I was I was thinking on this and thanking God, the devil was trying to take this away saying no you're not going to be in this when uh when the rains come you're you know you're not going to get the blessings of god and i said i don't think so and i just uh rebuked the devil in jesus name and and this just awesome grace just flew through me and just uh attacked that devil and ran him off so uh i just praise the lord and thank him amen amen thank you father we're looking for wonderful, wonderful things here, folks. Everybody's getting excited. And the Lord is opening doors to to make a way for the, the saints to be fed and ministered to, too. You know, that's that's exciting to me. I'm praising God for that. Brother Rule gave us a really good testimony the other night about um, what the Lord showed him and how the Lord miraculously protected him. And, uh, you know, the question in his mind and in a lot of his family's mind was, you know, if you didn't have weapons, who's going to defend you? Well, well, I'll tell you who, folks. The Lord is going to be your defender because his power is made perfect in weakness. And he gave us an awesome testimony, a good description of, of the way that what are you going to do if you don't have guns and weapons to defend yourself against the beast that God is sending to crucify you and you're refusing to go. <laughs> basically he's sending the beast folks you know what did jesus say when he was going to the cross like a lamb led to the slaughter and what did he say i send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves you never saw a lamb shoot at a wolf <laughs> you never saw a lamb bite a wolf right they just hunker down and die folks where are we going anyway is heaven to be feared well yeah for the wicked. <laughs> Rule, you feel like sharing with us? All right. He, 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 uh, I feel like I'm dragging him uh, to the mic here. I've white knuckles. <laughs> white knuckles. Uh. <laughs> yes, it's on. All right. Um, like David said, I'm pretty shy about talking on the mic, but um, I grew up, I, I guess I'll just give a quick testimony of where how I grew up I was actually brought up in a missionary group from a kid my parents are missionaries and up until I was 12 I lived in a missionary group and I I was uh you know I was taught in the word in a lot of a lot of different ways and I really knew the Lord and um after I was 12 one of the things that I one of the false doctrines I was taught was that you could never you could never lose your salvation you know and uh so after i was 12 and we left the group i pretty much never really got in the word never really spent much time you know uh reading any scriptures to see if any of the stuff i'd been taught was true or not i just believed you know believed uh well if i never can lose my salvation why bother you know getting in the word why bother seeing what the bible has to say about stuff and, and because of it i actually was led astray for a while and in a, a lot of different ways and one of the ways was I got into into buying a lot of weapons and guns and and I pretty much got a malicious spirit of thinking I was going to be able to defend myself in the flesh when whenever persecution might have arised and stuff and a lot of my family and I my twin brother and I we we started buying guns and ammunition and bulletproof helmets and gas masks and all kinds of weapons to 
and we had different ideas of how we were going to fight fight people when they came to arrest us and whatnot and and um and I really believed you know that I was justified and I was doing what the Lord wanted to and I felt I was still in his will but I the fact was that I wasn't I wasn't getting in the word I wasn't reading the Bible and I wasn't you know looking in the scriptures to see what the Lord said about it I just you know I was leaning to my own understanding and here's a couple testimonies uh about two years ago um the Lord I guess through a lot of the Bible studies that you're hearing right now opened my eyes and uh showed me you know that I needed to start getting the word and reading the scriptures and of course when you start reading the scriptures you see the Lord tells us we're supposed to put on Christ and and walk as he walked and I couldn't picture Christ taking up a machine gun and killing someone and and uh when they came to take Christ you know he even told them don't you know when Peter took up the sword and cut the Roman's ear off he rebuked him and told him don't you know I could call 10 legions of angels down to protect me well that's the protection you know one angel can destroy destroy 20,000 people in the in the bible you know and 10 legions could really really take care of a lot so I started thinking about that and it reminded me of these two incidences that separate incidences that had happened when I was a teenager and uh the first one I was about 18 years old and it was when I had just started beginning my gun gun spree uh collection and I was real into the flesh at the time and one of my younger brothers had missed his bus home from school one day and so he took the high school bus he he uh took the high school bus home and we lived in a real bad part of town and and some of the kids in the high school bus didn't like the fact that he was on the bus so as he was getting off they kind of beat him up a little and kicked him off the bus and and uh I hadn't heard about it at the time but the next thing I know about a half an hour later about 30 about 30 of these little high school kids came up to the to our house we lived out in the country and they all surrounded the front of our house and they had called they had called uh yelled at some of my younger brothers that they saw in the yard to bring out the one that they had beat up because they wanted to I guess beat him up some more or something and my brothers all came up to me and my younger brothers came up to me and knowing that I have all these guns and weapons and stuff and they they told me you know what was going on and they said you know we need to get the guns and stuff so you know of course I went at the time and armed all my brothers and loaded all the guns and took a gun out myself and you know and I figured you know I'll you know I'll show these guys you know and uh so I walked out there and sure enough there's about anywhere from 20 to 30 guys standing out in front of the house and they were just young young high school kids you know just kind of I guess ignorant in their thinking and uh basically right when I walked out you know I saw them on and I actually I, I remember just being real fearful you know even though I had I had a gun in my hand and I had all my brothers behind me with guns and and I was just going up against these little high school kids that most likely weren't armed but I knew that any one of them could have had a gun and at any point you know in reality they could have just lift you know pulled a gun out of behind one of their cars and shot me and that would be it you know and uh you know luckily for me most of the guys right when they saw me they just jumped in their trucks and cars and took off and and they all left except for one one group of kids jumped in the last car and they were about to take off and one of their friends started walking away like real slowly walking past the house you know thinking well I'm not going to you know act scared or whatever I'm going to you know walk away slowly and I and I remember you know I was kind of thinking well you know my pride got in the window I was thinking well I'm going to scare them so I started walking up to them and uh, the whole time I was had the gun pointed right above their heads and at that moment you know I was I was believed and 100% ready if I'd have seen any of them you know reach for a gun or pull anything out I was just going to shoot them you know which of course is not of the Lord but at the same time I knew at any point one of them could pull a gun out and, and shoot me so I was, I was real you know real uh kind of almost forcing myself just to get the courage even with all the weapons we had to to you know to walk up and and uh you know tell this guy to leave so I went up and I started walking towards him uh 
and I uh, heard him speaking, and he spoke Spanish, and he didn't know I spoke Spanish, and his friends were kind of freaked out. I could tell they were freaked out because they were in their car yelling for him to jump in. And I walked up to him, and I I told him, yelled at him to get in the car, and, and at first he acted like he didn't hear what I said, so I shot the gun above his head. And uh, then he jumped in the car and took off. And I remember... um you know, they took off and left, and, and I never really thought much of it at the time, but I turned around, and I remember thinking it was kind of strange that none of my brothers who I'd given guns to had come out with me. They were all hiding back in the house up until the point that the guys, the last guys left, and, uh, you know, I just thinking, oh, well, you know, that that didn't, I, I would have pictured them all to have been kind of, you know, anxious to have a time to, you know, use the guns and show off or whatever. But um, I guess, you know, the same spirit that I had of fear, knowing that I was trusting in my flesh, they, they were even more scared than I was. And, and anyways, I never thought much of the situation at the time. And uh, about six or eight months later, I had this other situation where some of my younger brothers had gotten into, you know, smoking drugs and doing drugs and stuff and and uh, and some of their drug dealing friends who they had told me stories of I mean uh, were older guys that you know uh, had I knew had a lot of guns because they would tell me stories of how they pulled guns on them and you know even threatened them when they're supposed to be their friends and a car of these guys drove up there was about five of them in the car and they drove up and asked. I had just gotten home from work, so I, you know I was getting ready to take a shower. I was just in my shorts, and I walked up, and I didn't really know any of the guys. But they, one of them, got out of the car, and he asked for my, my one of my brothers. And I just, you know, I, I, before I could even tell him, you know, I was about to say, well, I don't know where he is, you know, because I, I had just gotten home. But before I could say anything, he just starts being real rude and starts cursing, cursing me out and saying, why don't you go? go bleep and get them you know and and then I just told him I said well you know I said if if that's the attitude you want to have you know then you can just leave you know and I knew he was uh one of his drug friends so I told him I said you know this is my my family lives here and I have my younger brothers my little brothers and my my parents here and I don't want you guys dealing your drugs and stuff you know on on the property if you want you know, I'll tell my brother you stop by and he can go visit you if he wants but I don't want you coming around here doing that stuff and right when I said that, all of a sudden the guy who was obviously on some sort of drugs himself because he was really uh, out of control just starts, he just starts blaspheming the Lord. And, and he tells me, he says, I know you're just a little, and even at the time, you know, I I still, like I said, I believed in the Lord and I still, in my heart, I thought I was doing right even though, you know, I had gone astray. Um, he had known that I, you know, that I, I guess it was I was sinning, sinning out of ignorance because I was, you know, ignorantly uh, believing my false beliefs and stuff. But he, a lot of my brothers had told him that I, you know, I believed in the Lord, and and uh, he just told me, said, "I know you're just a little wussy Christian, you know, and and uh, and you know the devil's more powerful than God, and and your brothers have told me all about you, how you believe in God, and." And uh, you you don't know the devil's power because you've known the Lord your whole life and you were born knowing the Lord and and the devil you know he can you know he can destroy the the Lord and stuff and and uh, he just starts putting down the Lord and and telling me you know that basically you know mocking God and telling me that uh, that the devil is more powerful and at that moment like all my reasoning and all my fleshly responses kind of left and it was almost like the Lord just it was almost like I stepped aside for a while and the Lord just took me over for a moment and he the Lord just told him um you know well don't don't and he started threatening to kill me too he started saying you know that he was going to kill me and stuff and the Lord just had me stand there real calm I had no fear at all whatsoever and he just told me to tell him well if you think the devil's more powerful and if you think you know, the Lord, you know, can't take care of us, then just just do whatever you got to do. Because he had just threatened to kill me about three to five times. And then, like, right when I said that, he quit talking. He, and his, all his friends that were in the car during that entire time had this real, like, mocking spirit, too. They were all laughing at me. And, 
and like they were all ready to jump in. The one guy that was in the passenger seat got out of the car at that time, and the other guys opened the side doors like they were ready to jump out too. And uh, the guy walked up to me, and, and the Lord just had me stay perfectly still, didn't have me move, didn't have me put up any arms for defense or anything. And the guy just swung at me like like a, a real, with his right fist, just swung at me like he was going to hit me right in the face. And I never moved. I never tried to dodge him, never blocked him or anything. But his fist stopped about one inch from my face, and I could just see it right right by my left eye. And he just become became like paralyzed at that moment. And uh, as I'm staring right at him, he he just became completely paralyzed. And his eyes stopped looking at me. And he was looking about six inches above my head, with a look of complete shock and terror. And all his friends who were laughing at me and mocking me at the time, the guys in the the three guys in the back seat slammed the door shut and just had a look of terror on their face and just. And the guy that was right beside him that had jumped out started freaking out and grabbed his friend who was pretty much paralyzed like a statue who was stopped saying anything and pulled him back to the driver's side and started apologizing that, you know, that they had stopped by and, and for everything they had said and stuff. And, and he just was freaked out and told him that they, you know, that his friend was just coked up and he's like, I'm sorry, we didn't mean anything. We, we promise we'll never, you know, mess with you again or whatever. And they all just jumped in their car and, took off in complete terror and I never had any problem with them ever again they never came over and they never uh threatened me or anything again and uh I thought about those two incidences and the Lord showed me the time that I went out where I had all my buddies and all my my brothers with guns I had I was in complete fear and and uh never felt any peace whatsoever but the time I was by myself with uh, a lot more scarier of people, actual drug dealers who were on coke and drugs who were threatening, actually threatening my life and threatening the life of my, they actually threatened my mom's life too, saying they were going to kill my mom and everything. When I trusted the Lord and and uh, and just let the Lord take care of it, he sent them running in terror, and I never did anything other than trust him. And the Lord showed me, you know, that, you know, if we put our trust in him, he'll be able to do miracles and protect us more than the entire American army will be able to do in the, in the times to come. And that's what we need to put our faith in is not in anything of this world. The Bible says, cursed is the man that trusteth in the arm of the flesh, you know, and uh, and like David said, we're supposed to be led as sheep to the slaughter. And when we read in the Bible, one of the things that these Bible studies have really helped me with and encouraged me with is when you read the Bible, just believe exactly what it says. And when the Bible says to put on Christ and to walk as he walked, when we come to situations and, and false teachings where we where people tell us to, to trust in, in our guns and in the arm of the flesh, we need to ask ourselves, would Jesus do that? Could we see Jesus taking a gun and shooting someone for any reason? And, uh, just like in the Bible, Jesus had the power at any time to, to to destroy the people that came to crucify him. But if he had done that, then he he wouldn't have fulfilled what he came on the earth to do. But he trusted in the Lord, and through that, we have his grace to be able to claim his promises and everything, including, you know, our protection in the times to come. So I guess that's all I have to say, and uh, I just want to encourage anyone out there. The Lord's been... I just, two days ago, the Lord helped me get rid of almost all the rest of my guns. I had 28 different guns, machine guns, ammo, uh, sniper guns, and all kinds of things. And I got rid of almost all of them now. And uh, and it just, it just makes me feel a lot more comforted to know that I'm putting my trust in the Lord. And any one of you out there that had the same spirit of, malicious spirit of thinking we're going to defend ourselves the best thing i could tell you is to just give the lord a chance to show you that that we need to put our faith in him all right god bless you Bye. thank you rule that was great praise god you forgive me for twisting your arm <laughs> praise god well what do you think they saw folks Wow, I bet it was one of them big angels, you know, about twice as wide as Rule, just a little, about six inches taller, you know. 
with a bazooka hanging over his shoulder. <laughs> no, I didn't. The sword of the spirit, maybe. Who knows? A fiery sword. It was bad, whatever it was. Bad news. Well, I don't know if Christina wants to share something with us. I heard her share a really good testimony, and it was pretty neat. <clears throat> a couple of them, matter of fact. <laughs> um, you know that one you had about the White House? That was real good. The dream you had about the White House? She had an awesome dream about the White House. God's going to protect his children, folks. You know, again, this is about protection, supernatural protection. Now, you're, you're all right, huh? <laughs> We're both Mike shy, but not in person, if you ever meet us. Um, I had a dream, um, I guess it was probably about a year ago, and um, in the dream, there was a, a white house on a hill, and it had uh, like a porch with pillars, white pillars, like a, sort of like a colonial style home, but um, it was older. And um, it was up on a hill, and um, there was like a screen door, and um, inside there was a room and a table, and um, I remember there was a bunch of um, people there, and we were all sort of just fellowshipping and um david eels was there at the sort of sitting at the head of the table and we were just talking and um my husband ruel decided to i guess there was a lot of young kids there and he um he was gathering to them together to play a soccer game down in the field and um and so he went and he took the kids down there and they were playing this game and um and then the storm started to come I was sort of standing on the porch watching them play and um a storm started to come and it was just like thick black clouds just started rolling you know towards towards where we were standing and um so I started to get really fearful about the children that were playing in the field and I was really I was you know just this fear was kind of building up in me and I was like oh no the kids are down there and they're playing um soccer and they're in the field and um here comes the storm and there were all these um tornadoes but they were like miniature tornadoes and they started to come towards towards the kids and um so I ran in the house to get to get David um, because I knew that you know he had the faith to uh, pray away the storm, and um, so he came out real calm. And it, and by this time it's just like the wind is raging and you know like loud. It's so you have to almost yell you know over the wind and. Um, and he just came out real calm and, and just prayed, you know, the prayer of faith for the storm to cease. And um, the wind calmed down and and there was like this globe that I like, I don't know, like a force field or a, a globe or like, a, I don't know if anyone has seen the, the cartoon, The Incredibles. Uh, there's like this force field. It was like just this force field around the whole area. And, um, and then, but outside was still the black and, and the storm was still going on. And, um, and then there was like a, a covering that went over all of the kids that were playing in the field, um, and to, to protect them. It was like a grass covering. It was pretty strange. And, and, um, it was just real peaceful. And I was just so amazed. And encouraged, you know, by the safety that was inside of the, the, um, the globe or, you know, um, and then, uh, I was, there was a river that was flowing from the house. I noticed this after the globe. Um, I looked and there was a river that was flowing down out of the house, um, down the hill, you know, down into the field. And the river was just like sparkling, like, um, you know, when the sun hits the water sometimes and it just sparkles and glows and it was like glitter. Yeah, it was like glittering almost. 
and um, I was so impressed with the with the river that I went, you know, into the into the river to walk across it because and it was warm too, you know, it wasn't cold. And like some of the glitter that was it was just glowing. It was just, you know, like coming, you know, falling on me or whatever. And it was just sparkling, you know, and um, I was just so amazed and um just in peace about the whole thing and then I woke up but um it was it it actually that dream really helped me too I when we went through the hurricane I was thinking about that about the winds and about praying and you guys actually prayed for us um I guess it was a few days before the hurricane came and I also that dream kind of came back into my mind about you know God's protection for us so Praise the Lord. And I remember you telling me that um, that the tornadoes you knew were no threat to rule because he was big. Yeah, I was you know? I was worried about the kids because they were like kid sized tornadoes, yeah. like miniature tornadoes. But, you know, those kids are probably not physical kids. They probably represent people who are young in the kingdom. And, um, you, you know. Some things that God's people go through are, are relatively small um, compared to what they could be, but it's because of their maturity that they are big to them. You know what I'm talking about? God's people are very immature. And, and Rule in this dream, he was um, he, he didn't have anything to fear from the tornado because he was big. You know, folks, that's what we need to do. We need to get big. We need to grow up and... and um, and God's Word is the only food that we have that would cause us to grow into the image of Jesus Christ. We need to grow up in the Word of the Lord. You know, I think that river of living water that she was talking about wading through is is kind of like Ezekiel's river of living water, you know. It represents the Word of God, you know. It's uh, there to mature us and to protect us and to bless us, you know. God's awesome. His protection is going to be for His people. There is no doubt about it, you know. But uh, immature people uh, going into this time, they, they're the ones that are threatened, not the mature people. So grow up in the Lord. It's totally up to you to tell you the truth. The Lord has already provided everything that we need for, for life and godliness, you know, according to Peter. And um, we just need to partake of that, that word, that living water that um, has the power to make us live above this world. I uh, don't know if maybe Bill wants to share a testimony. He had a really uh, powerful uh, faith experience there in putting the tower up. Maybe he wants to share something with us. What do you think, Bill? I'm putting everybody on the spot tonight. As David said, I recently got back from Georgia, and uh, I had the uh, dubious honor of erecting the antenna tower. I wasn't. I went there not expecting what I had gotten myself into. I, If I knew... Then what I know now, I probably would have had a, a thought twice about going up there. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I I'm, I don't have a fear of heights. I have a healthy respect of heights, put it that way. <laughs> and uh, um, having built <clears throat> the antenna foundation and the anchors, and I did I built it from the ground up basically, uh, and so. I knew it as what was going to support the antenna tower itself, and uh, things were going pretty good. I the, the first 40 feet was not bad, and uh, we got it uh, we got it uh, anchored down pretty well. And then uh, the next 40 feet went pretty good, and uh, um, and then. We were getting to the point where it was timed, and we got the guy wires up, so forth. And I was every day I'd go, I'd look at the guy wire anchors and just check them out. And that one morning, it was one was cracked. And I tell you what, that cracked my confidence big time. <laughs> I says, man, I don't know about this. I think uh, we got to th- double think this thing because. The anchors is what holds the guy wires in place, and those anchors don't, if they give, that's it, you know. Uh, that tower could fall over. <laughs> and uh, uh, 
every time I climbed that tower, I, I had to pray before I walked, climbed up that tower. I said, I, I know, Father, you can hold that tower up because it, it's not my confidence in this equipment, I tell you that, that's holding this tower up. It's, it's my faith that's holding that tower up. Otherwise, I never would have climbed up that tower. There's no way. And uh, we got <clears throat> to the point where it was time to take, put the top section on the tower. And we just had a lot of delays. It was, it was like God was really testing me because every minute more I had to wait to put that top section up. It was like pulling teeth for me because I just wanted to hurry up and get it up there and get it done, get this thing done. And uh, uh, we got up Sunday morning, but uh, Sunday afternoon, or actually it's right before it got dark, Sunday night. And uh, But I, I got up Sunday morning and I had really negative feelings, really negative feelings. I was looking at the anchors and I was looking at the guy wires. And, I, and during the night, <clears throat> one of the turnbuckles got loosened up so the tower was leaning. And I'm going, oh, man. <laughs> I suppose, I know I'm not climbing up that tower if it's leaning. i got to get it straightened up. And, uh, and one of the guy wires went through a tree and was hitting a limb. So it wasn't really... Uh, the, the limb was putting pressure on the guy wire and that wasn't good either and I was going man <clears throat> this is not good and I said father you want me to go up that tower you want that top section to go up you're going to have to give me the faith to do it because man right now I have no faith <laughs> I have no faith and and uh, and I says it, I, I says if it's your will that tower is going that top section is going up and I know it is okay and uh and I, I said, I haven't come this far to give up. I'm not going to get up, and I'll walk, I'm not going to walk away from this thing. And uh, about that time, uh, Bob came out, and he's always upbeat, you know. And uh, and I was trying to get that tower straightened up, and so me and him, we got this, we got it straightened up, and we talked and so forth, and and. Uh, he said he needed to uh, go in the town and get some parts for that top section because the bolt that held the mast in place uh, broke off. So he had to devise another way to keep the mast in place on the top section. So he gave me a, a job to do. Uh, I had to put the ground wire on the on the antenna tower. The ground wire goes from the antenna itself all the way into the ground in a grounding rod on the base of the antenna tower. And it's like a 50-foot co coil of um, ground, uh, copper wire. <laughs> and then Bob leaves, goes into town, and I says, how am I going to get that 50-pound coil of wire on top of that tower? <laughs> and uh, I'm just standing there, and, and God starts putting all these things in my head and on how to do this thing. And and it just, things just start snapping into place, and I climbed up the tower. I got that grounding wire in, and things were falling into place. I started getting a lot of confidence. Says, you know, yeah, Father, you're 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 working in me now. I can feel it, you know. And uh, and uh, and about the time I got that grounding wire in place, that Bob got back from uh, the uh, hardware store in town, and we got that ma uh, the mast in place. And it came time to. Uh, uh, Haul up, haul up the main, uh, haul up the top section, and so we had the top section, the main mast, and the antenna attached to the main mast. But the main, ma or not the mast, not the main mast. Uh, uh, my navy terminology coming back. Um, <laughs> we it has to extend out, but we had it uh, inside the top section, so it wouldn't get, uh, cause a problem as we were hauling it up, and. Uh, so uh, before we started hauling that up, I, uh, I told Bob, I said, I want to pray about this. I says, this is a very important maneuver here. And we don't have experienced people doing it, you know. I'm the most experienced person now because, you know, I've been up and down that tower and I've got, you know, figured some things out and, and so on and so forth. And, and uh, I, I basically felt like David in the, in the cave there with his... Uh, <laughs> Um, band of renown, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, so we're just scraping up whatever help we can find around the place. And uh, I says we need to pray about this. And we we said a prayer. I you know I uh, the scripture I used was Mark eleven twenty four and Matthew eighteen and eighteen, saying if you pray about something, believe it, and you'll receive it. And then when two or three people come together, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, He's there among you. And, and I and I said, 
it's not me going up that tower because it's not in me to go up that tower. And uh, I said, Father, you want that section up? It's going up. And I believe it's going up. And we're going to get that section up. And it's gonna, nobody's going to be injured. And it's going to go smoothly. Well, God always answers the prayer. But he always tests your faith at the same time. <laughs> we uh, start hauling it up the first time. And it uh, was very awkward because it had that mass and antenna on the top. And and it wasn't going up straight, so we lower it back down, and and uh, I told Bob we're going to have to walk this thing up. And I said I was I would go, I was going to go down the tower and actually walk up with the top section so I could hold it in place, climb up the tower at the same time. And he says no, he's going to have Darcy do that, his wife. And I was like, man, I don't know about that. That's two of us up here at the same time. I said, I, and plus that top section it weighs you know pretty heavy. It was it was the heaviest piece we we, hung, uh, we hauled up there because it had the mass and the antenna attached to it and I'm going I don't want to be up <laughs> all that way <laughs> and I says oh well it's gonna is you know it's going up I believe I believe the uh, my prayer I'm sticking with my prayer you know I believe it it's gonna happen and uh so I we start hauling it up Darcy walked it up or client climbed up with it and it, and it got into place and we and uh the uh, we, we were hauling it up there with a, a thing called a gin pole, and it's a steel pipe that latches to the tower, and it's got a pulley on top, and it's got a rope, and you just like a hoist it up. And there was a tail rope on there on the section. Somebody's holding the tail rope to keep it from swinging, and I had another rope on the top pulling it up. So we actually had three ropes plus Darcy was walking up with it. Well, we got all the way to the top of the gin pole. And when Bob hooked it onto the section, he hooked it up too high. So I had about eight inches extending from the bottom of the, the last section that was attached so it wouldn't swing over. I says, Bob, <laughs> I don't know if you did that. <laughs> and I says, well, we're just going to have to lower it down again. I says, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 because, you know. I want to get down off that tower as soon as possible. I don't want to be up there any longer than I have to be up there. And I says, wait, wait a second. Dar Darcy was about 10 feet below me. I says, Darcy, you can come up here. And uh, I says, I'm going to grab the tower. I'm going to hold on to it. And they're going to let loose the rope below. And then you take that hook and you lower the hook down about to the next rung. And that's what we did. And we hauled it up. It, it, it cleared the bottom of the, the last uh, section that was attached, and it just wasn't going to go in. I, I couldn't get that thing in for nothing. Any way I tried to maneuver and everything, it just wouldn't go in because it had the and uh, may, the mast in there and the antenna, and plus Bob attached a little light box, and it was getting in the way of the pulley, and I just – and. And I wasn't going to lower that thing down again. It was getting dark. And when it's, I don't want to be up there in the dark fighting with this thing. I'm going, I says, Father, that thing is going in right now. And wham, that thing jumped, it just snapped right into place. And I told Darcy, I said, Darcy, that was not me that did that. I did not do that. And, and Bob saw it just going up. He was down there at the bottom and he just, he could just see it snap right into place. And, I, and so, so I said, oh, that's it. It's done. <laughs> now let's get off this thing, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, the point being is that uh, I went up there in faith because, as I told Bo uh, David, I said it wasn't within me to climb up there and do all that work on a, you know, in the, in the wind and the rain. And it, 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 it was windy and rainy that day when we did that, too. So, uh we got it done, and nobody got hurt, and uh, it was done by faith, and our faith was definitely tested, but every time it was tested, I just kept on going forward and didn't look back. So, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Fought the good fight of faith and won, right? Thank you, God. Well, anybody else got a testimony <laughs> while we're on a roll here? That's good. Praise the Lord. You'll have to use the mic. Um, two or three years ago, the Lord laid it on my heart that, that, uh, he wanted me to, sh 
share what I've been learning here, and I've been sharing it with the people there at the salon that I that I work at. And um, anyway, this this other situation was put on my heart about getting a pop up camper, and I got that several months ago, and I've gone through several situations of altering it down so I can handle it, and and little little edges of different things needed to be done, and somehow. It's all come together, you know. Uh, I think Nate's going to work on my Jeep again because I'm still having problems with the with the transmission. And he was telling me tonight that he really wanted to get that done because I've been so faithful to continue to pay him for the things that he has done to it, which hasn't really covered the particular problem. At any rate, he's going to take care of that, and I'm not concerned about that anymore. But everything's all done, so I'm sort of like in this limbo situation of sort of being numb about, you know, it's here, it's time, it's time to go now. And uh, so like I've shared before, I'm all excited about it, and I'm sort of scared to death about it too. Of course, we're not supposed to have any fear, but I'm I'm just, uh, you know, the things that are unknown, like, like Bill working on this antenna and everything, and his heart's desire was to complete the antenna and get it up because he knows the importance of what it's for and it's the same with me in this situation with mine each of us has something that we're all God has called us to do and and uh, even Raul being down here with with his wife and everything and his coming from the, from the very beginning it's just excited me to see these people and they they've touched my hearts so of how um They've been so obedient concerning what God has put on their heart. And it's just been sort of a very neat situation for me for the last 12 years to attend this Bible study and and not only watch myself of how I've grown, but watching the others that's grown up in the Lord and see them move out into the ministries God's called them to. And it's, it's the most exciting thing that's happened in my 61 years is to see God move in his people and see his people just become so compliant in the things that God's asked them to do. And like uh, Bill was sharing, it isn't us, it's the, it's the Lord in us. And even that's more exciting because then there's no fear about what you are called by him to do because you know he's going to do it in you and accomplish what his purpose is in your life. So I just want to encourage anyone out there listening that that um, God's going to do in us what he's called us to have done through us. And, and that's even exciting because, you know, I know I'm not worthy. I, I know I, you know, in my flesh, I shouldn't be here. But being here, I know that it was because I was called and God had a purpose in my life. And that means so much to me coming from the life that I came out of. So I just want to encourage anyone out there. God's moving in us and God's moving in his elect and I know that uh, some exciting things are ahead and like David has said we're not to fear about what God's called us to or what we're headed for because it's him that's in us and it's him that's going to accomplish Amen Thank you Father Well we're um, going to see Brother Cato off tomorrow I thought maybe he might pray for you folks so a blessing upon you and um, and then we'll just end with that, okay? God bless you. Uh, Father, we come before you and thank you for this time. Uh, just thank you for the fellowship, Lord, and the word and the testimonies, Lord, that we just had. Father, just uh, uh, continue to quicken us by the Holy Spirit into your word, Lord God, and uh, uh, that we just had. Uh, we just ask that uh, for more of your spirit of wisdom and revelation and understanding to understand more of your word and what uh, we've learned today. Father, I just pray for each and every one, Lord God, listening on the airwaves, Lord, uh, on the internet, Lord, and, and here in the fellowship, that, Father, you bless them, The Father, continue to draw them to yourself as they run after you, Lord. Uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill us with your anointing, your fresh anointing. Uh, uh, just set us on fire for you, Lord, that we run after you, Lord God. Let your word burn like a fire in our bones, Lord God, in the name of Jesus.
Father, as, as we are transformed, Lord God, uh, into your image, Lord, into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We just thank you and give you all the glory and honor, uh, Lord. I just thank you for, uh, uh, for your healing right now, for any person that is sick, listening, Lord God, right now. Father, we just thank you that you're touching them, that you're setting them free from any sickness and disease, uh, any oppression of Satan in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for that healing. Amen.